Uh, hello and welcome back. This is a little bit different for me today. I've swapped my camera equipment for some power tools, a pencil and a tape measure. We're just starting to get into week three of lockdown now in the UK and um, I'm kind of running out of ideas uh, photographically so I thought I'd use my time wisely now the, the dark days of winter have gone. Uh, we've, we've come into sort of sunnier weather nice and dry so I thought I'd get out and carry on with this van conversion now I bought this van last year probably around the same time last year March April time and started stripping it out and, and working on it so in this video I want to go through what I've done so far Hope, hopefully you'll find it interesting um, and please questions and stuff put them below in the comments and I'll uh, I'll link to different things as well in the video uh, in the video description so you know where I've got the equipment from some links to websites and things like that so when I bought the van it's a Vauxhall Vivaro bog standard van panel van it's uh, it's an XBT van so it's been well maintained and looked after uh, and serviced as well so it's fairly low mileage for the year um, and it's 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 nice a nice base van. It came as a box standard van. It did have a few bits and pieces inside still, which I've had to strip out. Namely that box that you can see. That was a nightmare to get. That's probably the hardest thing to strip out, I think, so far. Um, and I'd give it a good clean inside and out at first, and then set about starting to strip the the van out. So I'll show you some pictures now and um, I'll talk over the pictures to, to show you what I've done so far. This was uh, stage one of the, the build. After I stripped the van out, I think the hardest bit to strip out was the, the bulkhead, which took me quite a while to get out. Uh, I had to heat the bolts up with a blowtorch to try and get them undone because they were sealed with paint. So after I initially um, took that out, stripped the rest of the ply out and cleaned it out, the next job was to do the, the floor. Now, I made a framework up of using roofing battens, 25mm roofing battens, screwed down to the base of the van, uh, and then after that I inlaid Celotex sheet material, which was 25mm, and then taped all the joints up with a, with a foil tape, which kind of like a uh, vapour barrier almost. So that was the, uh, that was the floor. Next stage was uh, insulation. So I used a, a recycled bottle insulation and stuffed all the crevices with with this stuff. Any any sort of spare space was, was stuffed. I then went on to use uh, an adhesive sound deadening pad, which, which came in strips. So I cut that up and any spare panels that were on show, I'd stuck this on, which, which takes away the uh, the sound and, and makes it dead so, so it stops the van rattling around and then everything was covered with a a foil silver foil vapor barrier which is uh, almost like bubble wrap to, to touch this was uh, this was put everywhere basically all over the the metal any sort of exposed metal this acts then as a in insulation and obviously vapor barrier as well Next job was the was the floor. I used a twelve mil ply floor, so I cut this up. Uh, luckily, I used the the old flooring that came out. I used the the old stuff as a template, so I was able to uh, draw around that and use that to to make the new floor fit. And uh, as you can see around the the steps, I uh, cut around there, relayed new carpet in the steps, cleaned up the actual plastic step as well. I then laid a, a vinyl flooring down using an adhesive. That was fairly straightforward. Uh, cut all around the, the base units uh, before before the units went in, so that they would go underneath. I also used a, a checker plate aluminium strip to edge off the the steps, as you can see here. Uh, fairly straightforward to do. All cut with with a mitre. Next job was the ceiling. Now I did think about carpeting the ceiling but I wanted something a bit different so I thought I'd go along the route of T and G boards and um, so I, I had to 
batten the roof out first. The roof battens that take up the ceiling are actually screwed into the the metal framework of the van, and then the TNG board put up on top of that and and nailed up with uh, lost head nails. Now, obviously, but before well, whilst doing this, I've had to put in the LED spotlights. So this was all running, all the cables running before I actually fixed the roof up completely. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm quite pleased with the with the result. Something a little bit different. Now the job that I wasn't looking forward to was was this cutting out for the windows. Uh, I bought two separate windows for the sides. I've got opening doors on both sides of the van. Now on on this side, uh, it was just a, a straight single pane window. On the other side, where the kitchen area is, I chose one with a with an opening. Now this was quite quite daunting, quite daunting task. I used uh, a, basically a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, uh, marked out from inside, drilled through, and then obviously cut from the outside, and um, fitting the windows. Got some um, glass suckers, which make made life a lot easier. The the kit that I bought, I bought the windows from a company called Van Pimps, which I'll put in the description. They it comes with the uh, with the kit and the layout and stuff, and and it's very very easy to do actually. Uh, the the windows stick on with a mastic line underneath, which is which is hidden from view, and then you get a finishing trim, which goes around that cut edge on the inside, which finishes it off. But uh, despite the the fact that I was quite daunted by this, it went okay. It was uh, it looked okay, and now when the, the windows are actually finished, this is the uh, side where the kitchen is. I don't know if you can see the the opening part of the window there, it looks quite nice. It's it's nicely finished uh, and sets the van off. After I put the insulation and vapor barrier up, next job was to ply line the walls used a thin um, nine mil ply which is quite flexible to 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 ply the panelled parts that uh, that were insulated I then used a, a, a well a motor a motor carpet a um, auto carpet if you like to to carpet the walls just using a spray adhesive basically cut out the carpet and covered each part of the panel walls. I've inset, as you can see, a, a USB socket there, and on the other side there's a there's a lamp. Now, it was quite tricky on some parts, as I had to remove the rubber gaskets around the uh, the edges where the doors close to get it to to fit around. So all all that carpet is actually tucked in underneath, and it, it's now the rubbers are back on. It looks quite nicely finished, and all around the edges, little details like this where the ceiling comes up to the the actual metal part of the van, the the carpet it was was done, well this part of the carpet was done prior to the ceiling going up, so it all finishes off nicely. And when I come to trim it all, it's all the all the cut edges of carpet are, are hidden. And at the same time, I um did the door linings as well. I wanted it to go for a, a two tone effect on this, so the the actual panels of the doors, the removable panels, are done in a black carpet, whereas the metal part of the doors. I've done in a lighter, lighter grey. This was probably the, the trickiest part. As you can see, I had to take the panels off. Um, all the handles and things like that came off. Um, and I, I carpeted the panels prior to putting them back on. And obviously the uh, the lighter grey as well, which made it a bit easier. But it, it still was quite a tricky job to do. But uh, it's quite stretchy, this carpet. So it's a, a little bit forgiving. Now, when I first designed the, the layout of the van, I wanted, uh, rather than having a rock and roll bed, that type of thing, I wanted to, to have a, a U-shaped seating area. So here you can see, at the, this is at the back of the van, I've got the, the U-shape up to the kitchen unit on the right. Uh, and you can see in the, in the background there, that's the, the electrical box. Now, this was all done in two by two timbers, the framework all screwed down to the floor, so nice and nice and sturdy. And then I've used ply tops on these removable ply tops, so I can get at the uh, the underneath of the um to get to the storage underneath. Now this um this way of building this, I wanted to uh, to make it structurally uh, solid, but also lightweight as well. So I didn't want too much weight, 
and this I found was the the best way to best way to do it. And last but not least, the electrical section. This is at the well behind the passenger seat. I I decided not to go for a swivel seat which turns around, rather build this box which houses the electrics and acts as a as part of the seating as well. To the right of this um, is obviously where I've got built in a, a little cupboard as well. So that's that, that's quite useful. So now I've shown you the the pictures and explained what I've done so far. What's next? Well, there's there's loads. I'm I'm way off finishing this van, so I've, with this time, hopefully I'll be able to get uh, a few bits done. Although saying that at the moment, because of lockdown and everything, it's very difficult to get materials. I don't want to be ordering stuff coming through because uh, it's it's not a necessity at the moment. So I'm I'm working with what I've got at the moment. I've got my my wood collection and, and bits and pieces of screws and all kinds of stuff up in the shed so i'll be using what i've got so what have i got left to do well first and foremost let's talk about the the cabinets i've got you can see here these these rails that i've put up i'm building a, a floor to ceiling wardrobe space here which will come out in line with the kitchen cabinet here now in there i'll have my control panel in the back over the over the uh, kitchen area I'll also have a little bit of storage not a lot it's it's quite a small space but any sort of storage you can get in here is, is, is a bonus so I'll have some storage top middle and bottom uh, at the bottom of the, the the wardrobe will also be some electrical uh, gear which I'll talk about in a minute but yeah that's uh, that's one thing I've got to do so in terms of cabinetry I'm going to finish off the, the seating areas and the cupboards and all the bits and pieces with a ply furniture board which is finished on both sides and it's it comes in various different colours and textures uh, and I'll use that on the on the face of all these cabinets just to finish it off make it look nice. Now the kitchen area I built this cabinet myself from, from ply I did it to take up a fridge on this side so I'll have a fridge on there and then on this side is my water storage uh, water system. Now this cabinet was built with those with the fridge in mind, so the, the dimensions of the fridge will fit in there nicely. Uh, this side will have a, a cabinet door um, and probably some storage in the top as well. Now on the top of the kitchen unit, I'll have some worktop. I'm not not decided what I'm going to use yet, but the worktop will run from here right to the back of the seat here. I'll have an inset cooker and sink, sink on this side, cooker on that side and obviously the sink will all be linked up with my water storage. Uh, I'm going to use a, a water pump to, to go up to the tap so I'll have running water and then obviously the waste, the waste tank then as well so one for fresh water, one for waste. The fridge, again I know roughly which fridge I'm going to get, I've not bought that yet but I know the dimensions uh, and obviously that will be linked through as well. That will be controlled on the on the side of the wardrobe unit with a control panel. When I originally planned out the van, I wanted uh, a U-shaped seating area. So I've got this. I built this framework in a U-shape that comes up to the kitchen unit and around this side. The idea was to create a seating area, but also something that would convert into into the main bed space. So what I've done, all the seating area like this, it was run in the U shape. I've built some removable tops in ply for those so you can get access underneath. When these cabinets are finished off as well, there'll also be some, some door holes uh, and doors in the, in the front of these and also in the back. So when I open the back doors, I can get access to the, to the storage space underneath the seats. Now the plan is, when I come to finishing off this seating area, I'll have a furniture board coming up here, seating cushions on the, on the base and obviously on the back as well. Now when I convert this space to the bed space, all these cushions will fit like a jigsaw if you like, so they'll all come out and they'll fit on the base here, which is going to be made from the table. I'll have a rise and fall table here, so as the table drops down, it'll make up the space here and give me a base for my bed and then at the other end there uh, I've designed it so it will come out and make a framework and again the cushions all around this space will sit down and make my mattress if you like that's the plan 
although my side windows are done I've yet to do the the back windows so each door I've got two doors on the back um, and I need to cut out both um, both of these panels to fit the windows in the back that's that's yet to be done and I just thought I'd, I'd show you basically uh, my plans for these so I think you can see in the video here we've got crosses here so just basically showing me where I've got to cut out you've got this strengthening bar here so basically what I do is I drill pilot holes all the way around that template if you like just in line with this with this lip and then I use a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade uh, and I cut from outside because it's difficult to get the blade from the inside it's difficult with this with this ridge going around the door to be able to cut it out so I with my pilot holes I draw the template on the outside of the door and then I cut around with the with the jigsaw and then that pops out and then once the windows in I'm going to carpet line the rest of the doors you can see that I've done this bottom panel already and this this is a removable panel this is the door card uh, I'm using a two-tone carpet so black on this door card and it'll be the same as this the light grey then on the door just think it looks looks nice a little bit different uh, and then once all that's done uh, that'll be all my all my windows finished now at this end of the van which is where the seats are at the front over here will be my gas storage in this little section here this is in behind the kitchen unit it's big enough space there to, to hold the gas or the gas bottle this little section here is just a little cupboard underneath and obviously I've got my electrical system here which I'll go through in a minute then on top of this I've got another ply board going across both pieces and that'll be cushioned as well and obviously up here as well this space above the gas bottle I'm going to put a little drawer unit in there as well so I'll have a bit more storage any storage I can get out of this van is, is a bonus and again with this little section here I can put little bits and pieces in there as well and again I'll have a, probably like a roller shutter door on the on the front the front of this this unit here I'll have uh, faced off with furniture board and obviously it'll have to be accessible so I can get to the uh, get to the electrical system now you've got I've got put in a little light here just a little spotlight so if I'm in the middle of nowhere and it's dark and a fuse blows I can basically turn that little light on and I've got access then to the to the electrics to fix the problem so here's my electrical system so far and I must say at this point I'm not an electrician an auto electrician or any other type of electrician so if you're going to do something like this yourself just make sure you uh, research it properly and if you have any doubts at all I would get somebody in that knows what they're doing and um, so far so good it's all working and I've, I've done it to the book using uh, various research that I found on the internet and like I say it seems to be working so first and foremost my battery it's a 110 amp battery nice big battery and I've got my positive and negative there coming off this is linked then into my main battery at the front of the vehicle so all the cabling goes underneath the underneath the floor I've then fitted a split charge relay now this basically what this does it's as you're driving along it charges your battery up when you stop it cuts in and cuts that off cuts it off from the main battery so the the charge is still in your main ledger battery but it's obviously it, it's it's splitting that charge when you when you're driving now I'll put a link in the description for where I got that uh, very easy to fit and obviously on here you can see part of the kit two blade fuses here so a break off points if you like so if anything goes wrong those fuses will go first rather than blowing anything up and catching fire I then put in down here an earthing point which is after the vehicle and uh, this is like an earthing bar so all my black cables come off here to all my devices lights all that sort of thing so they're all earthed and then up here you've got the fuse box so I've got my lives coming in here this is the main live coming back to that fuse and again it's fused there so if anything goes wrong it'll blow that rather than anything else in the van so all these are fused live so this is a 10 a 10 insert fuse box so you can have 10 different things running off it so basically you take your you take your lives out of this way and then you come back to this to this earthing bar then with your neutrals now I've obviously put a strap around the battery this is 
if I'm right in saying I think this is uh, needed for, for MOT purposes, it's got to be strapped down to the uh, to a fixed point to stop the battery flying around if you had an accident. So that's all strapped down and uh, nice and secure. So as far as other electrics go, I've got quite a lot to put in yet. I've got a, a kitchen light to go above where the kitchen unit is, just a, like a strip light, a down lighter. I find these these spotlights in the ceiling they're okay they're, they're kind of ambient light so they're not they're not that bright bright enough but obviously if you're if you're cooking and stuff like that you want a bit more light so I've, I'm gonna add in a this kitchen light I've also got a control panel to wire in one like this if you can see that it's got a USB port there four different switches so I can have my fridge my water pump um, maybe a light and something else on there and it's got a little display, an LCD display there, which shows you coming off separately. That is, that shows you the ampage of your of your battery. Make make sure that everything's charged up and, and working okay. So that's that's got to be fitted, and that's going in on the side of the wardrobe, just above the kitchen area. And last but not least, I'm going to also fit an inverter, which basically takes my 12 volts, uh, converts it up to. 204, I think it's 230 volts, so I can use, uh, I'll have two, two three pin sockets basically, just like a normal household socket. So if I'm out anywhere, I can charge my laptop up and use the laptop and, and keep it keep it running. Uh, and also, you can also run like a fan or, or like a microwave, whatever you want from that as well. And uh, I'm also gonna fit a hookup kit. So if we go and use a campsite where there's, there's electric hookup, I can still make use of uh, their power rather than my power off the battery. So as you can see, I've got a lot of work to do still. I was planning on getting this finished by the summer, which is only a couple of months away, but because of the way things are, I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm just going to plod on and do what I can do with the materials that I've got, and uh, hopefully it won't take too much longer. Fingers crossed if this thing, if this thing pans out by you know, September-ish, who knows. But the plan is to have a, a nice self-contained photo bus, as I like to call it, to go off and do some shoots. Uh, so I'll be fully self-contained. Uh, that's that's the plan. But for now, I'm going to get back. I'm working on the ceiling at the moment, just finishing off the edges. I've got some finishing strips to put on. But thank you very much for watching. I know this is a little bit different. And please, if you've got any questions on what I've done so far, if you want any advice um, and, and links and things obviously look in the description below but if, you, if you're after any information please comment in, in the comments below leave your questions and I'll, I'll answer them if I can uh, but thank you thank you for watching and um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next but please subscribe if you haven't done already and click that notification bell that'll inform you when I put new videos up they're a little bit thin on the ground at the moment, obviously, with the things way, the way things are. But hopefully I'll, uh, I'll start getting back into things. But yeah, for now, I'm going to get back to work. Thank you for watching and stay safe and I'll see you again next time.